Hey everyone. Oh, am I on? I'm on. Hey everyone. Welcome back to White Sparrow Living, Luke 12, 6. I'm Wendy and I'm so happy you're here. If this is your first time stopping by, welcome, and I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below, as well as the little bell right next to it so that you can be notified every time I upload a brand new video. If you like these projects, don't forget to give them a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think, and now, without further ado, let's get started. For our first project, we're gonna be using two of the wooden bunny cutouts, a plunger handle, and four wooden crates. And the first thing I'm gonna do is start by painting everything. So I have to get them all ready and I'm just taking the tags off and the stickers on the plungers are really, really sticky. So I use my heat tool that a sweet viewer sent to me to get that off and then there's still some residue on there. So I'm gonna sand that down and get it all nice and clean. Now I'm gonna take my Waverly White chalk paint and I'm gonna paint my bunnies and my four crates and my plunger handle. And when I paint my crates, I'm gonna be sure to paint the insides and the very tippy tops. You really don't have to paint the sides, but just in case something pokes out, I just wanna get that covered all up. And then I'll also paint my plunger handle and on the bunnies, you wanna make sure to paint both sides. So now I'm gonna take some painter's tape and this is actually the wider painter's tape but you can use the regular sized one too. But I'm gonna put one strip right down the middle and then I'll put another strip and then a third strip and then I'll remove that middle strip so that'll be the spacer that's the exact same size as the tape itself. And I'm just gonna continue doing that all the way to the end of my bunny and I'll do that on both bunnies. So now I'm going to take my chalk paint in celery and white and I'll mix those together to get a really pretty light green and I'll just start painting my board and I'm going to take my brush and go inward away from the edges of my tape just to make sure there's no bleeding. And you can also use the base color first before painting your color or you can add Mod Podge and that'll also be another way that you can prevent any bleeding. So again, I'm gonna make sure that it's completely dry before pulling up my tape and adding my next layer. And normally I don't wait for it to dry, but in this case, there's so many lines and I would probably put my finger in it and get it all messed up knowing me. So now I'm gonna use the same process with my tape going horizontally this time and just pull up that center piece so I get perfectly even stripes. And then I'll use that same mixture that I just used on the vertical lines and I'll go all the way in the other direction. So now that that layer is completely dry, I'm gonna leave that tape in place and then I'm gonna go over again with new pieces of tape on the white spots where we originally put it the very first time. And you wanna be pretty precise with this, otherwise your buffalo check is gonna look a little bit wonky, so we don't want that. But you'll be able to see where those white lines are so you can place your tape pretty perfectly. And then I'm gonna paint those squares with the celery coming straight out of the bottle so it'll be a little bit darker. And if you wanna see a good tape reveal, revealing the buffalo check at the end of this process is so much fun. And believe it or not, in one of our DIYs that we're gonna do in just a minute, I have an even better tape reveal. So now I'm gonna take my four boxes and I'm gonna place them side by side and then next to each other. So as you see I'm doing here, I'm gonna use my multi-purpose cement from the Dollar Tree and some hot glue and I'll place the two side by side and then I'll place the other two side by side and then I'll place those together in the middle. And you wanna make sure that your outsides are as flat as possible because we're gonna be putting our bunnies on each end. 
And then after they're all together, I'm gonna take my sanding sponge and sand the edges of my box and my bunnies. So now I'm gonna lay my bunny face down and place my box where it's gonna be and then I'll mark that with a pencil so that I know where the glue goes. And I'm using the same cement and hot glue and I'll just attach that and make sure that the bottom is flat so that when it's sitting on a flat surface, it's not wonky. So now I'm gonna take my plunger handle and just set it right in between the bunny's ears and mark out where I need to make some slices. And then I'll take it outside and make those with my miter saw. You could also use a hand saw to do this, but just go about halfway through and then it's gonna slide right in between their little ears. I did add some glue just for some extra security, but it's pretty tight in there. And then I took my white chalk paint and touched up where I had some green on the back of my little bunnies and at the ends of my dowels. And then I took two little jars and I'm gonna place those inside one of the compartments. And then I took some lamb's ear from Walmart and these are $2 for this bundle. And I'm just gonna fold the stems up and pop those right inside there. You could also use those Starbucks bottles or the Dollar Tree milk bottles, but I just happen to have these. And then I took a couple of books and I'm gonna place that in another compartment. And then I had this plant that I got off of Amazon a while back and he needed a little bit of fluffing out, but I just popped him right in there. And then on the other side, I have these small little saucers that I got from the Goodwill and I just put those in that last compartment. And then something you could also add are one of these little bunny tails from the Dollar Tree. You would just remove that little clip and hot glue that right to his little bum. And I think that would be adorable too. I didn't put it on there, but here it is all finished. And oh my goodness, I love this so much. It's so pretty and springy. I love this green color and how soft and clean it is. You could use this for your silverware or your napkins. You could use this for a lot of things, maybe in the bathroom. Anywhere you put it, it's gonna be super cutie patootie. But I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too. In today's video, I'm teaming up with my new friend Jenny at Lovely Moments Creating, and she is such a sweet soul, and I would love if you would pop on over to her channel when you're done here. I'll have her video linked in the description box below. But I've said this before, I'm always so proud of you guys, in a non-boastful way of course, of how you all help us support other channels with your kind comments and words of encouragement. So thank you for being the absolute best viewers ever and just being the light to others. And here's a little sneak peek of what she'll be creating. She does it all. She'll do farmhouse and thrift flips and all kinds of things, but I think you'll really adore her. For our next Dollar Tree DIY, we're gonna be using some styrofoam bunnies and eggs, a vase and some Spanish moss and some greenery. And so the first thing we're gonna do is paint our bunny and our eggs all white, and then we'll go back and add the colors afterwards. I am gonna leave my bunny white, but for the eggs, I'm gonna do some super pretty blues and greens. And so I'm gonna be using my Waverly chalk paint in celery and white and crystal. So after I take off all the little bows, I'm gonna leave them on their skewers and then I'll paint them completely white to cover up any of those bright colors that are on there. And then I'll go back in with my blues and my greens and I'm adding white to it and just making different shades. And I don't even change out my paintbrush. I'm just using the same one. And if it mixes with the blues and the greens, that's perfectly fine. So after I get them all done, I'm gonna take some Waverly Wax in Antique and add a bunch of water to it and then just start speckling these little guys. And I got it all over my craft area and on my tripod. 
everything was speckled after I got done with this one. But I'm using a fan brush and I'm using a method that I saw my sweet friend Linda use at Faith Chick 777 and so she made it look so easy so I decided to give it a try too. So now I'm going to take my Spanish moss and put that at the bottom part of my vase and then I added my eggs and then I'll break my skewer down and add my bunny in there. I end up putting some moss on his skewer so that you can't see it but then I'm going to add some greenery that I got from Walmart and then there was a little stick in that Spanish moss and I just decided to stick that in there as well. And here it is all finished and I love how this turned out and it's gonna go so pretty with our vignette that we're working on I love these soft colors they're muted and so pretty and again anything that's small and you can gaze into I think is just so magical but I love how this turned out and I hope you like it too For our next DIY, I'm going to be using some Dollar Tree flowers and some lamb's ear, some ribbon, and a happy fall sign, which I'm sure looks pretty familiar. And then I got this stuffed animal from the Goodwill, and I thought he was so cute, and I couldn't stop playing with him. <laughs> but I thought it would be cute to dress him up a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my happy fall sign, and he was watching me the whole time. <laughs> And I'm just going to use my Cricut spatula to get the paper off of that sign. And then I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in celery again to match everything. And then I just took some of the pretty striped ribbon and I'm going to wrap that around his neck and just tie it in a knot. And then I'm going to hot glue two of the pink flowers on the side of his neck. And then I'll take some white ones and put one on each end. And then using some scrap lamb's ear, I'm going to take a couple of leaves and glue those together and then put some on both ends and at the top, just wherever it looks cute. So now I'm going to take some more of that striped ribbon and I'm going to do the fold over method and I just rolled it over three times and then cut it off and then I'm going to make teeny tiny little slits right in the middle so that when I put my paddle wire in there I'll be able to move my loops around once I get it all together. So I just take some paddle wire, run it through there and then twist it in the back and then I'm going to use some of the green grow grain ribbon, that's hard to say, and then I'm going to do the same exact thing and then I'll attach that with that excess wire and then I'll foof all of the loops out and get it all intertwined and then I'll dovetail the ends and attach it to his flowers using that excess wire. And then once my paint is dry on my sign, I'm gonna take my white paint pen that I get from Walmart and I'm just gonna write, he is risen. 
and I'll first write it in cursive and then I'll just go back and make those lines that I did downwards I'll make those a little bit thicker so that it's nice and fancy and looks like a faux calligraphy and then I'm gonna hot glue that to his little hands and that kind of hurt me but <laughs> he had to hold on to his sign And here he is, all dressed and ready for Easter and proclaiming the word. <laughs> but I think he turned out so adorable. Maybe you have an old stuffed animal, a bunny, or maybe even a lamb would be super cute. But I love him and I hope you like him too. For our next Dollar Tree DIY, I'm going to be using this book box, a mirror, a tin sign, and then the base of some pumpkins and a wood bead. So I went online to try and find some post boxes and MyNiftyNook.com had the most cutie patootiest of all post boxes. And so they were about anywhere between $30 and $40. So I'm going to try and recreate something similar. So the first thing I did was made a line to make that top part go straight across and then I'm going to use my craft knife to carefully cut across that line and then I took my ruler and made another line one inch down or the length of my ruler and then I'm going to make an angled line so that the front part of my box is going to be shorter than the back part of my box. And so I'm just gonna cut everything down and get it as close to even as I possibly can. And then I'm gonna take my tin sign and I'm gonna mark out where my box ends so that I can fold those ends over. So using my wire cutters or tin snips, I was using everything just to see what would work. I'm just gonna snip those pieces in on the outside of where I marked that line. And then I'm just gonna fold it over to make the sides of the lid of my box. And then I'm going to see how far over I want it to hang and I'll make another line and then I'm going to cut those little squares out so that when I fold it up together it's going to look like one piece. And then just to make sure there's no sharp edges for little fingers to get cut, I'm going to push those down with some pliers and make that nice and smooth. And then I'm going to paint my mirror and my tin lid with my Waverly chalk paint in white. And on the mirror, I don't have to get it completely covered because we're going to be distressing it anyway. And then I'm also going to be painting the wooden base and my bead all in white. And then the book box, which is going to be the bottom part of our post box is going to be in the celery to match our color theme. I ended up giving everything three coats of paint just to make sure none of the patterns were showing through. And then on the mirror, even though only half is going to be showing from the top, I wanted to make sure that that kind of blended in in case it peeked out from the sides. So then I'm going to take my wood bead and I'm just going to hot glue that right to the center of my wood piece and then I'm going to take that whole thing and melt, melt, <laughs> I'm going to attach it to the top part of my lid. So then for the front of my box, I'm going to be using my Silhouette Cameo 3 and I just made a little design that says post and then put some flourishes down towards the two corners at the bottom 
and then added a little bird. And so using my transfer tape that I get from Frisco Craft, and I'll have this linked in the description box below, I'm gonna do the opposite. I'm just making a stencil. So I'm gonna pull out the insides of the letters and leave the outside behind, and that'll become our stencil. And then I'm gonna take my transfer tape, which is also from Frisco Craft, and I'm gonna put that on top of my stencil and then pull that backing paper off. Now, because I'm attaching this to a cardboard surface, I really don't want it to pull up any paint or ruin that. So I'm gonna brush on a little bit of baby powder to make it less tacky. And then I'll put that on the front of my box and pull off that transfer tape. So as you saw in the inspiration pieces, they all had that lifted filigree and design on the front. So I'm gonna use some mastic from the Dollar Tree and just take a little spatula and apply that right on top of my stencil. And I made it a little bit rough so that it wasn't just perfectly flat. And this was so fun. I'm gonna have to do this again for something else. But this design was so small and intricate, I really didn't think it was gonna turn out well. So remember when I said I had an even better tape reveal? Well, this is it. It was so cool how well this worked. And even the tiniest little details came out perfectly. I was really surprised. And I didn't wait for my mastic to dry when I pulled off my stencil tape because I thought it would start cracking and not have good edges. And I also had to be very careful when I was weeding it to not make any dents or smudge it as I was pulling it up. And then after that was completely dry, I took some Waverly Wax in Antique and watered it down and then took a chippy brush and distressed all of my pieces. Unfortunately, I didn't press record hard enough and so I missed everything except for me distressing the top of the mirror. So that's a bummer because I thought I did a pretty darn good job too. <laughs> but I just used the side of my brush to get the edges and then just went over the face of everything. But what was really pretty was when I went over the words and that filigree. So now I'm gonna put everything together and because there wasn't a lot of area to attach my mirror to the back of my box, I had to lift it up with a couple of pieces of craft sticks and so I just hot glued those down and somebody had asked about my cement and what it was called at the Dollar Tree and so I wanted to show you what it looked like. But I'm gonna take my lid and attach that to my mirror and then I'll take some more cement and hot glue and put that on the inside of that back part and attach it to the back of my box. And here it is all done and I think this turned out so sweet. I love the rustic vintage look of it and of course I love this color but originally when I wanted to do the post box it was when we were doing Valentine's Day so how cute would this be in pinks and just full of love? Well it's still full of love but I love how it turned out and I hope you like it too. For this Dollar Tree DIY, I'm just gonna be using one of those wreath forms, the birdie and some of that wire. And I'm just gonna start deconstructing this wreath. And originally I thought I was gonna use the second wreath as a base, but I ended up not needing it or the wire rings because once I pulled out enough of these strands, it left me with a perfect ring to use as the base. And that's what I'm gonna start feeding the other individual pieces through to hold it together. That'll make sense in just a second. 
So once I got it down to this point, I knew I could use this instead. And so I just took those individual strands and started feeding it through some of those layers. And that's gonna hold it in place. And we're making a little bird cage. Well, it's not really little, it's pretty big. But I'm just gonna feed it through and then I'm just gonna keep adding two on all different sides so that it goes all the way around. And I'm gonna let the bottom be covered as well because once I took these pieces out, they kind of had a triangular shape. So I just went with it and used that third side as the bottom of my birdcage. And I didn't use any hot glue on any of this. And you'll see there's only one time that I end up having to use any hot glue and that's to put my birdie on the side of the cage. And then I'm also gonna take some strands and just lay them across so that they're not all just meeting at the very top. They're gonna go all around and just be all super organic and pretty looking. So once I got everything in place, I'm gonna take some of that wire and wrap it around at certain intersections where there's a few pieces together, and then that'll keep it secure. And this is why I didn't have to use any hot glue. And of course, this isn't gonna show because we're gonna paint this once I get everything in place using my wire and then also some paddle wire. And then for the legs, I'm gonna take three pieces of that larger wire and I'm just gonna curly cue the end and I want these to be kind of messed up and crookedy and look old and handmade. So I'm just using my needle nose pliers to make those rounded ends and then I'm gonna feed it through that base and then wrap it around again. And then I'll be able to change the height to make sure that it's level. And this wire is pretty thin, so it will stand up on here, but I can also manipulate it and move it around so I can make one side a little higher if it's not level and just get it all nice and evened out. So now I'm gonna take some paddle wire and then using a dowel, I'm just gonna start wrapping it around and making a big long curly cue. And then I'll take it off of my dowel and attach it to my bird cage. And I'm gonna do this about four or five times to make it look like twisted little vines. And then I'll take my paddle wire again and just doing some straight pieces, I'm gonna start wrapping it around and I'll feed the little spool in and out of those wood pieces so that it looks like another layer of skinny little vines. So once I have everything together, I'm gonna to take it outside to my paint station and using my Krylon Fusion Matte Black Spray Paint, I'm just gonna paint the entire piece. And you can do this in whatever color you want. I just really like the black and I have a lot of it on hand. <laughs> so it would still be super pretty if you did it in white. It would be pretty in a brown. I don't think you could go wrong with any color on this. So now I'm gonna take some of this cocoa liner from the Dollar Tree, and I guess it's called that because it's made from the fibers of a coconut. And I'm just gonna cut out a small circle to go at the bottom of our bird cage. And because it's soft, I'll be able to feed it through the front door of our cage by folding it in half like a taco. And I forgot to mention that when you're constructing your bird cage, make sure you leave an opening that will serve as the front door. Now I'm gonna take some Spanish moss and I'm just gonna grab a handful and hot glue that down to my liner. And then I'll just kind of make a little hole towards the middle so that it resembles a nest. And there seems to always be some free twigs included with our moss, so I just left those in there for some additional cuteness. So 
So then I took three of these Dollar Tree eggs and I'm just gonna place it on a skewer and I'll make one a light green with the celery, a medium green, and then a darker green and just get those all nice and blended and pretty. So then to finish up our birdcage, I'm gonna do two more layers. I'm gonna do some pipberry garland from the Dollar Tree, and then I'm also gonna do some greenery. But for the pipberry, I'm just gonna attach it and then do the same thing that I did with the paddle wire and just go in and out of those openings and let it just kind of lead me and go wherever it wants. And then once I get one roll put on there, I'm gonna add my nest inside and then I'll finish up with the second roll. So if you saw my video on my craft room organization, you know I have this bin full of scrap pieces of greenery and this comes in handy anytime you need little bits of greenery. And so I'm just gonna take a bunch of small pieces of wire and attach my greenery to my bird cage. And I'll just do that all over and then we'll get our little birdie done. So I got this little guy during Christmas time and I think he's so pretty because he's got real feathers and it's just so pretty. Although I am gonna have to get rid of his Saturday Night Fever outfit because he's a little bit overdressed for his abode. So I'm just gonna take his wings off and then I'm gonna use my white chalk paint to paint him all white. And I'm gonna leave him on his card until I'm done with the top and then I'll take him off and then pull the little clip out and then paint his little belly. And then I'm gonna take off the little silver bits of his fanny wings. And then once he's all painted and dry, I'll take his wings and glue those back onto him. And then using some black chalk paint, I'm gonna paint his eyes back in and then he'll be ready to go. And then I'll place my eggs into the nest and then using some hot glue, I'm gonna attach him to the top part of our bird cage. And here it is all finished and oh, I am just smitten over this one. I love how this one turned out. It did take a little bit of work and it was a little bit tedious, but who doesn't need to exercise their fruit of patience every now and then? <laughs> but I love how it turned out and I hope you guys like it too. I hope you enjoyed all of these projects and if you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, comment, let me know what you think, if you're not already, I hope you'll consider hitting that subscribe button down below as well as the little bell so that you know every time I upload a brand new video. Don't forget to check out Jenny's video linked in the description box below. Let her know I sent you. Of course, I'm very behind in all of my comments and responding. Oh, that was my dog. <laughs> But just know that if you get a heart from me, it really is from the heart. I love you guys. I hope everyone has a blessed day, a blessed Holy Week, and remember to always be the light. Bye!